If you didn't have the chance to watch 16 hours of conference or trail to Krakow in person, then you are in the right place. I've been to the AppJS in Krakow last week and in this video I will share 10 takeaways from this event so you stay up to date with everything going on in the React Native ecosystem. Before we dive in, make sure you subscribe to this channel for fresh React Native videos coming every week and also check out galaxies.dev for export video courses and projects on becoming an epic React Native developer. If you're ready, then let's dive in. First of all, Expo is completely all in on iteration. So the keynote from James was all about iteration speed and how developers, how teams, how companies can develop and ship React Native applications faster using Expo. And that was also the theme of a couple of other talks and presentations. Uh, right after James, there was also Charlie uh, highlighting or showing a new tool called Expo.new, which you can access to um, create your applications faster. It basically allows you to directly connect your applications with GitHub, with EAS, and just configure all of Expo tools together. And then of course, uh, there were talks here from Gabriel about using Expo Orbit, which is another tool to instantly preview your applications um, even now on Windows. Expo is really completely sold on this mission of making our development speed and their iteration a lot faster. And that was the theme of most of these Expo Folk presentations. Second learning for me was that brownfield apps are still actually really, really hard to do. This was a great presentation from Marius who showcased uh, how he approached a brownfield integration of React Native into an existing application, <laughs> what steps he had to take. Just going through, it, through the documentation of how you can begin this to even create a simple application is unbelievable challenging. And of course, he encountered many more errors during the way. So if you're working on something related to brownfield app, check out Mario's talk. Learning three is that Expo is strong on all platforms, not just iOS and Android. It works on Mac, it works on Windows. And there were many talks like here, Tommy Nguyen from Microsoft, about all the different platforms. We got also bringing this on TV OS or uh, React Native Vision OS. Um, and you can use this in different ways. So here are great examples how Microsoft is handling this internally in their apps. And actually they're using this in many applications. So you can see the same application running on Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. I'm not exactly sure which one this is, but you see Microsoft is internally using React Native in many applications on many platforms. And even here, this talk from Maxwell about TV apps in the wild, super interesting and inspiring what you have to um, consider when you're building TV apps or this one really practical from Eric and Giovanni. Uh, I really like the NFL application here. They shared what it requires to bring the mobile application or even the tablet application to TV. So Expo really works on all these platforms. And of course, Evan shared an approach later as well with React Native server components to use Universal Expo or React Native. Learning number four is that you don't have to fear native modules. With Expo, with React Native, it is really unbelievable easy. And Fernando Rojo shared a great approach in his presentation. So go watch that and also listen to his episode on the Rocket Ship podcast, uh, where we talked about all his components. This talk was about live coding with Swift and image gallery. It was really interesting what he did in Xcode and how he approached the API of that component. And there were more talks. For example, Dominic shared insights in how you can use live activities with Expo. I consider live activities really something truly native for iOS, but these things are possible given to the nature of how React Native works and how you can easily add stuff, in this case, to your main apps bundle. Uh, you can use Swift extensions, you could have uh, Siri integration and many more things with React Native. And of course, Katie gave a great presentation of how you can use Expo development builds. I think I've said everything about Expo development builds in the last video or it's coming <laughs> next week, but basically, you can do whatever you want with Expo pre-builds and you're free and you're not uh, limited by anything like eject anymore. That was really a thing of the past. Don't be afraid of native modules. Learning number five is that Epic apps are built with React Native. I had a video on this before on the channel where I showcased many of these applications and the AppJS was just showing me this again and again. Uh, this talk from Aaron was about the starring application and how they use 3JS to generate something like this. It was truly inspiring to see what is possible, but also Kim uh, shared an example of how the Odyssey music application 
uh, was built to get like instant user feedback and the challenges he encountered during building that application. So this was just a reiteration for me that you can build pretty much every great experience with React Native. Point six is that React server components are possible with React Native and make React Native applications even better. This was already showcased by Evan a week before at the React Conf, but he gave a similar talk now at the AppJS and this great demo of how React server components can work within a React Native application. He built this cool AI demo and included even more than the usual applications are usually able to handle. So with React Native, you cannot just have like text results, you can include native replies. You can uh, have like a call out a context menu as we can see here, um, you can call an Uber, you can show a map, you can show a calendar and all of this works really great with Expo Router. This is a very, very early demo of React Server Components working with React Native and something he called server driven native apps. As far as I know, the timeline for this is more like 2025 to be sure that everything works out, but Expo will most likely present us a solution to host these uh, React Server Components and I'm unbelievably excited about the potential of these components. Then learning number seven, something I'm really happy about is that the React Native IDE is a reality. And I don't talk about James, he's also real, but I talk about the React Native editor that I've showcased in another video before. Go check that out for an in-depth review. Christoph also showcased some new features at the AppJS. And I think at this point, everyone can use it. So it's like an open beta at this point. And I highly recommend you check this out because in the future, this might be a great option for you to develop your React Native applications. There are many cool features. Um, as also check out, of course, his talk where he presented these. And of course, his talk was also quite funny. So go rewatch this, links below this video. No AppJS would be complete without William. So point number eight is that, first of all, William is an epic speaker. He gave something like an Apple keynote and he introduced two new things. So he presented React Native Skia video where you can edit your videos with Skia, you can overlay them, you can use filters, uh, you can do all sorts of crazy things. And he also addressed the elephant in the room, which is that they are working also on another library using WebGPU to bring 3JS in an even better way into React Native applications also for Android. Actually, this is probably beyond what I understand. I've never used uh, anything like this on the web, but if you're anything interested in this topic, go check it out because William's presentation is really, really great. Learning nine for me is simply that the community is incredible, okay? I've showcased a few of the talks in this video before, but there were many more from the community, like this one from Delphine. Uh, Delphine went deep into yoga and how a problem uh, came up in yoga. She will actually be also a guest on the Rocket Ship podcast where we talk about yoga and CSS. Another great talk was from Britta about accessibility in React Native applications, how we should approach accessibility. And I personally learned a lot from that talk that I didn't knew before. And of course, there was Dolly. Uh, Dolly presented here a pretty cool feature config to enable things in your application, another package made available, or of course, Gant from Infinite Red, who shared a really cool presentation in the last slot at the FJS hard slot, but a cool React Native ML kit they've been working on and open sourcing. It's not just the, the smaller companies working together on creating something or the whole community and individuals, but also like the big companies, Meta, Microsoft, Amazon, Shopify, all of them work together to make React Native bigger and better. And that is just something that I haven't seen in any other community so far. Learning 10 for me was simply that React Native is alive and moving forward. Just last week, we saw that Expo is now the recommended framework for React Native. There's this new concept of frameworks and that we should always use a framework with React Native and Expo is recommended, as I said. And then there are new advancements in so many different areas, like the announcement from Prismar, which is now an ORM available for Expo. Um, this talk from Philip about how the new architecture works under the hood. This was really technical, but something definitely you should check out if you want to understand the new architecture and just finally wrapping this up again with a quote from Tommy, it's alive. So this was really important to me to see that the community is vibrant, the companies are working on it and there are just so many players 
pushing React Native forward, being the new architecture, bridgeless mode, uh, React Server components, and everything that's working with Expo Router, and all the other integrations that we've seen across this video. It just shows that everything is possible with React Native. All right, I hope this gave you an impression of the AppJS event and all the amazing talks. Of course, they were all great, but I just simply recommend to pick out those nuggets that you think are important to you and watch those talks because usually they're like 20 minutes so you can easily digest them but overall they're definitely all worth watching and so did you watch any of them let me know in the comments what was your favorite talk or your favorite takeaway from the fjs i definitely read through all the comments and also thanks to software mention for this cap it looks like i'm from stranger things isn't it like a nice retro vibe i really like this cap so if you were there, you probably got one of these, also one of these epic shirts. If not, come to the FJS next year. It was real fun. All in all, I'm simply very bullish on React Native, probably more bullish than ever before. Seeing all these companies work together and the community hand in hand is just so great and you can really feel the fire in this ecosystem. And if you want to become a React Native developer, of course, check out galaxies.dev for more courses and hit the subscribe button for weekly videos coming on React Native on this channel. Also, if you want to see the latest features, I will pin a video up here about the Expo SDK 51, which is currently the latest version. Go check that out and I will catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.